Uh, so today I have the pleasure of speaking to two uh, recent Birkbeck graduates, Tyson Holmes-Lewis and Leon Wright. So Tyson and Leon both founded Mentivity, uh, an inspiring mentoring organisation. Um, and yeah, thank you so much guys for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you. Um, let's just kick it off by hearing a bit more about you and the work that you're doing at Mentivity. Um, so I suppose I'll go to in the shoe. So um, Mentivity is an inspirational mentoring organisation and an alternative uh, education provision. And um, we provide support for young people, schools and parents through one to one uh, mentoring and uh, group conversation mentoring. Also, um, our aim that we kind of do is to foster greater educational attainment and engagement um, with young people in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, and just to add, try and help them to be the best version of themselves possible. Um, and, you know, we have fun with it, but we are, we are very kind of, you know, disciplinary in a sense. But again, it's about building relationships with, with the, the whole child and everyone around the child. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a great journey. Amazing. And so what, what to you guys, you know, makes mentoring and, and building those sort of relationships so important? Oh, well, I think I'll, I'll go for this one. I think um, one of the things that, so that there are three of us in terms of co-founders and directors, and the three of us all felt that if we had greater support um, and people around us that kind of, you know, helped to guide us at, you know, key stages of development. So, you know, um, through adolescence, going through puberty, and then going into the, you know, the world of work and that sort of stuff, we would have been more successful than we are now. And so, instead of complaining about it, why not just be the change and then, and try and, you know, create something that's going to live a lasting legacy um, because we all worked in education and just felt that, you know, your hands are tied to a certain extent. There's only so much you can do and there's so, so much support you can offer. So we just decided that let's, let's get this going and, and provide a, a all encompassing support package for young people. And um, yeah, so just to add to that, um, we, we all happened, which kind of brought us together, we all happened to have a fantastic mentor uh, by the name of Abdullah Ben Kamal. And he was a mentor for us at a young age, um, in the teens, uh, late teens, um, at 16 for myself, maybe a bit earlier for um, Sace, who's not here, one of the co-founders, and around about 15, 16 for Tyson also. So he came into our lives at a pivotal part. And um, if personally for myself, he helped to steer me away from a life of negativity in essence with a lot of the interventions that you put in place through football. Um, so I have a lot to him and understood uh, the importance of having someone there, other than a parent, because I believe there's only so much that your parents can actually do. You know, I think a lot of people do talk about parents should have done this and should have done that, but there's only so much a parent can do. And I think outside of your parents, you do need those positive role models um, around you and in your life. Absolutely. It's probably also only so much that kids will listen to you from when it comes from their parents. Yeah. <laughs> like hearing it from someone else. So you guys mentioned that mentor. Did that come through? Did you say football that that relationship came through? So yeah. for myself, I used to go to a youth club and um, he was like my key worker at the youth club. Um, right. I used to attend. I'm really not going to mention the name because <laughs> It's a historic youth club in London, but um, I used to attend there and um, he was there and he used to say to me, look, what are you doing here? This place isn't for you. You need to come out. You can do more of your life and just kept on encouraging me. And um, I eventually kind of left and he said, look, I've got this other thing to offer you and it's through football. So he brought me into a football team. And since then, you know, the football club, it brought a lot of young men from different areas that weren't supposed to get along together. It brought right and made us a community and just to see the impact and the power of what you know football could do I think and sport and just one person could do through mentoring us um, as young men you know it went a long way it's still kind of it still is the blueprint what we use today. Are yeah. you still in touch with him does he know how much he's kind of shaped the work you guys do? He is yeah. integral to most of the stuff in which we do and um, we still support him still stay in touch um, we just believe that we owe a lot to him um, for everything for his sacrifice and everything he has done so we routinely check up on him and just keep him, you know, near to us at all times. Yeah, I mean, and in, in celebrating him, we just um, launched a, an online exhibition due to, it's gone online due to COVID and we, there's a, you know, a part that's celebrating him and what he's done for us. So um, we can, I guess we can talk about that online exhibition a little bit yeah. later. 
<laughs> Incredible. So what sort of, you know, what element of the work are you guys most proud of looking back? Because it's been in place for what, is it five years you guys have been running for? You know, looking back on the journey, what's kind of some of the bits that you're so, you know, proud to kind of look back on? We were, we were discussing this the other day because it, it was actually our birthday a couple of weeks ago now, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think... First of all, starting the business and 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 you know just working with the hundreds, if not thousands, of young people that we've worked with in that time, um, helping to affect change. But it's always the um, the testimonials of the young people that come back and say, "Do you know what? Without you guys around, I don't know where I would have been." Um, and that for me just fills me with so much pride that we we are having an impact, a positive impact on those young people that we work with. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Leon has some other things to add but yeah I would definitely say the recognition from the young people um you know just just little nuggets I mean sometimes there's this we a lot of the sessions that we do run and have with the young people they're like a lot of it's fun based it's educational but it's fun based sessions and to hear someone come back to you at the age of you know we've been going for five years but I suppose with all the work that we've been doing in education between the three of us there's 60 years experience you know everyone's almost given 20 years each so when someone comes to you at the age of 30 and says, I remember the session with you, sir. I remember when you said this, that, and it really helped me in life. And I'm like, why are you 30 and calling me, sir? My name's you. I'm like, no, sir, I can't really call you. I can't call you on this disrespectful. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's nice. It's just nice to look at young people and see where they are and how far they've come. And just the input that we've had has made a positive impact in their life. And I suppose the national recognition that we got, we were um, 2019 national mentoring um, of the year so organizations thank you um that was massive because it hasn't taken place since so it didn't happen in 2020 obviously because of covid it doesn't look like it's going to happen 2020 because of covid so we still in essence hold the title for that that's amazing just keep it going just hold that one silver lining (laughs) it's just um that was an amazing thing because we looked across the room we just turned up thinking this would be a great networking event to see what uh, organizations are doing and for us to get a better practice of the work in which we do and stuff and we just went there um not expecting anything but just thought it'd be great networking opportunity it was expensive to go anyway so we thought this would just be good and um the shock on our faces when they said mentivity was just like you can there's a video footage of me just like, what <laughs> yeah so um it was crazy but just having that national recognition that this organization is doing um, really impactful work within the community it was just um, amazing and um, yeah, well celebrated and it really kind of took us to another level with the work in which we were doing. We was able to kind of leave the kind of areas that we was working and go quite, you know, could almost say national yeah, because where we cover and the work in which we cover now. So yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like your, your business and everything's filled with so much success now, but talk me through kind of some of the challenges, um, you know, you know, it could be pre-mentivity or kind of through mentivity that you guys had to go through to, you know, get to where you are today. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so the other, the other person who's not here is, is, is my brother, um, my oldest brother. And so bringing sort of family dynamic, sometimes it's great. Yeah. Sometimes it's not so great. So we've had Leon having to be the referee at times um, between the two of us. Um, so that has been a challenge at times. I think, you know, starting off in the first year of business was like fantastic. We, you know, we, we had a few contracts because we didn't have much overheads. It just was quite easy to, um, to get, get, get going. And then we kind of naively said to Leon to come and come full time with the organization. And didn't have any anything really signed, like lined up, signed off in terms of contracts. So we were really struggling in our first year. And I remember sitting in a, in a, in a room um, and just looking at each other, like, "What are we doing? How are we going to pay our rent? How are we going to, you know, pay for all the, you know, all of our our bills?" And it just we had to really kind of come together and just we we're sharing money around. So you pay your rent, and something comes in, he pays his rent, and yeah. and so it, you know that was a huge challenge for us, but. We, we, you know, we held fast and, and we got through it. And, you know, we've had similar challenges, you know, especially with COVID, it's really, really difficult. But um, it, it's, it's the unknown. You know, you step into it and you can have, have help from other people who have done something, you know, set up a business or done something similar. But 
we we're not like any other organization so that unknown has been very very challenging and it's just led to a lot of sleepless nights and <laughs> and um you know just just yeah tough conversations so yeah that's been some of the challenges yeah. it looks like you can both smile about it now then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they they come and go. Um, you know, we as Tyson said, with COVID and everything, you know, we do go through a lot of it's kind of just turbulent. Um, but you know, I think just going through the experiences of early um, when we, you know, it was like come on board, so we've all jumped in and said, yeah, we've quit our jobs. And um, at the time, I'm a pastoral manager, like head of year at school. Mm -hmm. um, Tyson's in education. Says is. Sace was made redundant, so he's basically just come and used his redundancy money to set up everything. So um, to leave all that and come into the unknown and then everything to fall apart straight away, for us to kind of bond together, um, the way in which we did, it just kind of solidified that kind of brotherhood that we have. And that we have to make this work. Like, this is it now. So we were forced, in essence, to ensure that mentivity was a success. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine that pressure, although painful, was probably quite helpful to kind of kickstart oh, everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think you, it definitely um, laid the foundations. Definitely. You talked a little bit about how the pandemic impacted your work. I can imagine, obviously, massively, I, before, I guess, it was a lot of face-to-face -face interaction going into schools, all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. How has it changed? You know, how have you guys adapted this year to kind of keep going? Um, I mean, go on, go on, go ahead. I would say that we've, when it first hit, we kind of was in that little depressive state, depressed yeah. state like everyone else. Um, you know, I think I definitely gained at least a stone just from <laughs> thinking this all over and just eating and just staying in my house, not doing anything. And we kind of came together and said, look, guys, what we're going to do, let's just plan. And um, we happened to, um, at the time, we had probably about a couple of years previous to Corona, we had um, contact with Goldman Sachs and um, we were running a pro program with them, a project with them, and it went well. And they reached out to us again and we said, look, we can do this. We're going to offer you another project that's going to be online. And um, they were just like, okay, cool. Let's just see how it goes and let's do something together. So we collaborated. Um, we just kind of put our heads together and came with this wonderful plan of sessions that we can run with young people since they're not going to school and stuff and um it was a huge success both to Goldman Sachs and to us so shifting online obviously it was kind of like a sink or swim uh, moment for us at Mentivity and for many people and um, with the emergence of um Teams and Zoom and all these other different mm -hmm. platforms now I think it, it really has helped um, us to adapt and a lot of different organizations just to adapt in how we do the work in which we do I mean we still do love the face-to-face -face interaction with the young people and it's better that way for us because we do see it happening but we've had major success with lots of young people through um, the online platform so yeah. we are ever grateful um, you know just for that time you know because there is a time I think with most people everyone's thinking about their jobs and losing jobs and stuff and from the bad stuff of COVID and everything that's happened I think a lot of good stuff has been birthed from it as well so we try to have that positive mindset and outlook on a lot things um you know and there we like anyone else were in that kind of depressed state like what's going to happen but sometimes it's just about snapping out of that and thinking outside the box and what can we do now yeah yeah easier said than done but um i think one of the, the the huge things that keeps us going is that if we're talking a talk to the young people and we're saying to them they have to be resilient and you know they've got to be hard working and all those things then it's like it's almost like you know, we, we have to hold ourselves to ransom because we have yeah. to do it too. And so, you know, as Leon said, that 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 transition from face to face, you know, being in the school, you know, almost every day to online and, you know, sitting in the living room by yourself and, you know, being all animated in front of the screen and then looking around and like, well, you know, people probably looking from my window thinking I look a bit crazy. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that transition was difficult and, you know, and it, we were all, all out of our comfort zones. You know, just how we thought we were tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole other level though, isn't there? Yeah, we realized how we were. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a huge challenge and it still is challenging um, because it's harder to build relationships with young people online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but you know, huge successes, as Leon said, we the Raising Aspirations project was, is what we, we ran with Goldman Sachs. Yeah. We had young people from all over London, all over England, sorry, yeah, as well as Wales, and we had someone as far away as, as Nigeria wow. who joined the program. And so, 
yeah, huge success. We are due to start another one after half term. Yeah. Um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to it. And it's basically about, about creating pipelines into industries that are underserved by not only ethnic minorities, but also by um, people who are living in difficult situations, you know, poverty, that sort of stuff. So yeah, we, 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 we're trying to change the way in which mentors are viewed um, and, and make it more of a professional, you know, um, arena that, that people can say, I want to be a mentor when I grow up and, and there's real prospects to do it. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I guess as well, the reach, you spoke about kind of going a bit more sort of national as well with your work. Yeah. One of the benefits that comes with going online is like, just as you said, you immediately have a bigger reach, even though it can't be the sort of face-to-face -face interaction, but immediately, yeah. you know, just being within the M25 isn't a barrier yeah. for accessing your work or your support. You can kind of, um, yeah, reach a bigger audience. So yeah, like you said, sort of silver linings, I guess. Yeah. Um, everything you guys do is all in the business of kind of inspiring people, raising aspirations, all that sort of stuff. We talked about one role model in particular when you guys were growing up. Who inspires you now? Now, oh gosh, I think it's, I think we're quite actually, we're, we're quite fortunate in the sense that with the work that we do, we get to meet a lot of people. Um, and there are, there are a number of names that I could call upon, but we, we are now creating a, a a network of people who are our peers, um, who are, you know, around our age and are doing fantastic things. And, um, you know, to, to look around, we are kind of linked with the wall of comedy or the wall of productions and looking at some of the young people that are working with them and saying, you know, they've, ex they've achieved so much and they're still pushing. So we can kind of, you know, have conversations with them. Um, and I just said, I think my circle, I mean, my, my brother, Leon is who's my honorary brother. We inspire each other. Um, and to, you know, in, in the sense that going to university while working, creating a business, we have another business that was running. You know, there was times when I'm like, I'm, I'm done with this today. Yeah. And I speak to Leon, he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit down and write my, my, an essay. And I'm like, okay, he's writing his essay. He's still going. All right, let me get, keep going too. And it was, it, you know, without going outside of our circle, we have enough inspiration within it. And that for me is, is one of the wonderful things that we were able to, you know, tap into. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely would agree um, with Tyson. I think he's, he said about, you know, having that support network and those people close to you. But I think we, we take it for granted sometimes because the work we do, but I am inspired by a lot of the young people um, that we encounter, their stories. Um, the stories that we hear and things that we know that some of these young people have gone through, but they're still able to get up every morning and come to school and persevere and get on or come on a Zoom with us or talk with us, you know. For me, that's inspiring if, you know, as Tyson echoed before, if we're telling them that you've got to be one, do one thing and we want you to say this and we want you to do that and we want you to be resilient and break down barriers, then we've, we've got to be at the same, we've got to do the same. And watching these young people just do that on a daily basis for us um, is amazing. So I take inspiration from a lot of people that we work with because they're amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We run a mentoring program actually at Burbank as well, where we pair alumni with um, current students. And actually, so often the alumni will say they get more, more, or they get stuff <laughs> from the students than you know potentially they feel like they've given back as well. So it's kind of like it's it is definitely not just a one way relationship, I guess. Oh, it, it shouldn't. It should never be. I think mm -hmm. that's one thing that separates us from other organisations is that we go in saying I want to learn from 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 you guys. And so going back to like the tech stuff. There's young people that have helped us with, with you know, you don't know how to do that. Okay, let me show you. And it's just like, okay, but we're willing to learn. Yeah. And so by by demonstrating that, we're opening up the the channels of communication and that that two way street of of learning. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And what's funny is that you mentioned it is that I actually had a mentor whilst I was at Birkbeck. Did you? So yeah, so I had a mentor um, for a year, um, a year at Birkbeck and. It was, there was nothing he, I don't think he helped me with the work whatsoever, anything to do with the work, but it was just what he did get, and this is the kind of giving back and backwards and forwards, and I'm a mentor myself, but I think it just to give me certain structural organisation within my life, how to juggle family and with your studies, with business, because in that essence we were equally yoked and quite a similar background to what we was doing, 
it helped me massively to juggle everything. So for me, that, you know, that was a massive impact on my studies because there were times, and I'm sure, you know, Tyson would tell you when I was just like, I'm done. Um, Tyson, compared to me, he writes the most elegant of essays. I used to look at his essays and be like, Tyson, this is absolutely amazing. Mine's nothing like yours. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes just to be like his. So, but um, it was just all those things and just, you know, I suppose relying on Sace and Tyson, you know, really was... And my wife and just the support network from family and friends was the backbone of yeah. me persevering personally and just making sure I crossed the finish line yeah. in my studies. I mean, I will get on to kind of, yeah, we'll talk a bit about your time at Birkbeck and yeah, I completely agree in a sense. So I did a master's um, whilst working for Birkbeck and I feel like it's a really lonely place initially yep. you because you think it's juggling all these different commitments um, mm -hmm. that you're not used to juggling, all this sort of stuff. And actually just speaking to someone else who's done it, who's yeah. started, and you've got to the other end, can yeah. be really sort of reassuring just to help manage time and stuff. But yeah, obviously one of the main reasons <laughs> today is um, that you both uh, recently graduated from Birkbeck last year. So Tyson, you were doing a BA in psychology and education. Leon, you were doing um, a bachelor's in social sciences. Talk me through the reason you guys both decided firstly to come back and get a degree, you know, what prompted you to sort of um, want to study, but then also a little bit about why Birkbeck. Yeah, I think it was, for me, it was quite multifaceted. I think um, first and in no particular order, um, we work in education. And if you want to command respect and or demand respect, I think it's important that you have a qualification that is highly sought after. And so for me to speak to a young person and say, you know, you could go to university, you could do this. If I haven't done it, how can I give them that, that, um, that advice? Um, and so that was a kind of the professional side of it. The personal side of it was in, in my house, I've, I'm one of seven siblings. Um, so I've got two, two older brothers and four younger sisters, but, um, and then obviously my, my mom. And so we had a wall in the, in the living room that had pictures of everybody with a degree. <laughs> I was of, of the, the young of my siblings that were of age I was the only one that didn't have one so I was like I gotta get on the wall I'm getting on the wall exactly yeah <laughs> which was actually upsetting because my mom decorated the, the living room and took down the photos so no way you need to get your up. you need to I don't care you need to just get up for a few years at least <laughs> so, so yeah those are my reasons um with myself, I'd say um, an important part for me was having children. Um, my daughter left nursery um, and she had a graduation ceremony to do at nurseries. And she sat me and said, Daddy, have you graduated before? And um, I think I then done my personal statement about two weeks after she said that. <laughs> You're like, yeah, just give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I come from a family uh, of four. And um, I mean, my mum and dad, there's no degree um, between my mum and dad. My eldest sister went to university but didn't finish. So my younger sister didn't go, didn't go, and my brother didn't go. So there's no one with a degree within the family. Mm. Um, I think for myself, I've always looked at myself as um, not really that academic. So it was a challenge for myself. The pressure was off. Whereas when you're younger, I think there's a lot of pressure on you from parents to want to do this and want to do that. And I think as an adult, because the pressure was off, it was just me doing it for myself and you know there wasn't like you have to do it for this specific reason so because I had that not saying it didn't come with its challenges but I found it very much um much more easy I would say um in essence that I was just doing it to prove to myself that I can do it and um yeah I was just able to do it you know so yeah just happy yeah amazing and so why I, I don't want to put words in your mouth at all I'm guessing because obviously you're trying to run a business throughout the day well I get, was it the evening study element that appealed to you guys about Birkbeck or was there something else yeah I mean we we had a, a bit of autonomy over our timetable so it wasn't necessarily just the evenings um but I think that definitely was one of the, the things that stood out um I had actually applied to a couple of other universities the previous year so two years prior um, didn't get in they said I wasn't academic enough which I was like mm, but that was based on my qualifications yeah um because I'd done a BTEC you know all those years ago in college and so so I, I, I stumbled upon Birkbeck and then actually one of my friends a, a mutual friend of ours actually yeah. had gone to Birkbeck um and actually done the same course that I'd done um and so after I had my interview um with Anna Anna Lewin. Um, 
I was I was absolutely sold. Um, just the way in which the passion that she had for for the subject, um, and just walking into into the place and feeling like okay, I'm I'm in academia. I, it, yeah. it, it's a nice place. It's a nice feeling place. Um, and so that was my 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 reasons why I picked Birkbeck. So it just it made me feel at home and comfortable. So yeah. Yeah, I would again agree um, a lot with what Tyson said. And I think just having the autonomy, I think, and you know, the flexibility that Birkbeck offered, as well as there was a few people that I had known that were currently studying or had just finished studying at Birkbeck also. Um, and that helped with my decision making because they were just able to sell it to me also about, you know, the, just all the great stuff that the university was able to offer. So I was just kind of sold and just thought, okay, cool. I think this is for me with my lifestyle, everything that I have on. And I didn't want to feel out of place. Um, I had a friend that had gone to another university, but said he felt like he was surrounded by a lot of younger people. Um, especially as an adult, <laughs> especially as an older person, you don't necessarily want to be, um, you know, we're both mid thirties. So you didn't, you know, gosh, trying to think how old I was when I first started, but I just didn't want to be in an environment where I would have felt uncomfortable um, with a lot of younger people, but just going to um, Birkbeck, myself, I probably was one of the youngest that yeah. on my course, mm -hmm. was again, and I, I just think being there with the mixture, I think, of people that attend Birkbeck, yeah. the way we was able to rub off and help each other when we needed, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't understand, there was a lot of stuff that the people older than me didn't understand, some people younger than me didn't understand, so we was able just kind of to feed off each other and help each other, which kind of worked yeah. out well because it was nice to see everyone um because you all choose different subjects and go your different ways but on graduation day it was just nice to see everyone oh look you made it you made yeah, it yeah. nice having that conversation so yeah yeah especially for you guys because obviously you did you know doing a bachelor's you did it for four years yeah, yeah. that's such a commitment you know like, like you said you probably started like early 30s kind of mid 30s now like that's quite a kind of crucial part of life you know <laughs> as any part of life but like yeah it's, it's obviously a huge commitment when you do when you're in that first year and you're juggling mm -hmm. work, running a business, family, social life, or lack of, you know, when you're at Birkbeck, <laughs> um, and then trying to write an essay. Um, it's, it, it, I feel like when you've got four years ahead of you, it must be, there must be times where you think, this is too much. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we both said to ourselves, there is no, there's no other alternative. Like we're, we're, we're graduating. Yeah. And that for me was the, was the, gave me the impetus to kind of keep going and, I remember I, I was looking at a post that I put up on Instagram and, you know, a picture of my, my laptop and saying, you know, this is me for tonight. So no, there'll be no more interactions with the world until I'm done. And that was it. Phone went on airplane mode and I just spent all night writing. And then we've all got, we've both got a picture where uh, we've taken a, a selfie when we're like actually ready to tap out and just look back at it and think, you know, that was the time I was ready to tap out, but I, I completed yeah and to look back at it and say do you know what this fills fills us with so much pride um so yeah no it was, it, it was tough that four-year stretch um and again because we we were running another business which is a, a football club a, a youth football club as well and so trying to juggle two businesses family life as you said study and trying to have a social life um it it, it was tough i don't know how we did it but we yeah. did and we're here and we're we're proud so you yeah. look back and you're like, how did I feel? Fine, <laughs> like, or like, you know, you have you have spare time now, and you just think, I don't even know how I fit in <laughs> all that essay writing. <laughs> I would say, I would say, I use the, I normally use the term blessing and a curse, but I'm going to use the word curse and a blessing that kind of mm. us. Um, as you know, it's well documented. University fees are absolutely astronomical, and um, there were times, you know, where I wanted to quit and Tyson, you know, I don't mind saying it. I've gone to Tyson and like, Tyson, I think I'm done. And he just looked at me like, you can't quit. It's yeah. some pounds. And by the time it builds up, you're in your second year, it's like 18,000. Yeah. yeah. You start to add everything up and you're just like, actually, I can't. I can't. So in that way, having the fees high also made it a blessing because at the end of the day, you had to look at it and say, well, I've spent too much money and I have to pay this money back anyway. Yeah have to pay that money for nothing it doesn't make no sense you just have to keep on going forward and pressing on and then that's something that I just took away is that you know what you just got to keep on going you just got to keep on pressing on so. yeah. and you're making an investment in yourself um Definitely. even though it's a huge, what feels like a huge <laughs> investment. um what kind of advice would you guys give current students today who potentially are at that first year of their you know four-year courses that feels like a long stretch ahead of them what would you say go, go on go ahead Leon. Uh, 
Um, I would say the road's not for the swift and just to keep going. I think that's the best um, in, in advice I could give someone. And um, just to keep going, um, there's going to be, you know, lots of bumps on the road, on the journey. And um, but I would just say to people, just keep going. I think it's important just to keep going and persevere and just don't stop, you know, and the, the, the race is not for the swift. It's a long endurance marathon. And then just take each little bit, you know, at a time. Um, one thing I would say definitely about essays is don't try and write your essay all in one go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, my first year, I was plagued with trying to get it all done in one go until, um, again, my second year, I met a great mentor and um, said to me, why are you trying to do that? That's very, <laughs> that's going to stress you out a lot, isn't it? And I was like, well, what do you, you know, just do three lines a day, four lines a day, like, and see how it goes then. And just those little hacks, those little bits in life, or just, as Tyson would always tell me, make sure you do your reading. Just read, 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 just read. Yeah. You know, it's it's important, you know, just having Audible on and just listening to stuff. So those little things really do make a huge difference, um, you know, and I think it takes people further than what they think because a lot of people, they think it's a sprint and they run out of energy and yeah. for a bit. And that's what I witnessed during a lot of mine was people falling off a bit, whereas... You know, it's everyone that kind of just took their time a bit and just kind of started jogging, you know, and getting into it and getting a feel for it. They really did persevere. And those are the people that I saw at the end. So, yeah. 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 I think to, to in addition, I think I remember walking on my first day, bright eyed, bushy tail. <laughs> and, you know, thinking, oh, this is this is great. I remember speaking to some of the young people and saying, oh, oh sorry, guys, I've got to go. I've got to, I've got a lecture um, and feeling, you know, just excited and all of my books and all that sort of stuff. And then realizing that actually this is going to be it's going to be a, a bit of a journey, but I would say one module, one essay, one you know one step at a time. But also, it it goes so fast, and yeah. as long as you decide to stay the course, you've got to decide to stay the course, um, and give yourself almost no option to say oh, I'm I'm doing this no matter what. Um, I went through. We, well, I mean, we went through. But personally, I went through so many different things. You know, deaths in the family. <laughs> I went through a divorce, um, life changed. I've moved literally every year during, yeah, I think I moved every year yeah. during, the, during the, um, the, the four years. And so I went through so many different things. Um, as I said, life changed so much, but the one thing that for me is that I kept on growing through, through my degree and that helped me so much. So it, it, it seems like a long time, but it does go really quickly. Yeah. And the sense of achievement at the end for you guys now, looking back, it must yeah. be massive to kind of oh, know. Listen, yeah. I cried. I yeah. cried on my, on, my, on my graduation day because it was, as I said, life changed so much. I was so emotional because I stayed the course. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, yeah, yeah, that sense of pride is huge. I think it's another thing is the growth within yourself. Um, my mindset now compared to my mindset before I started studying, I'm a total different person. Um, I used to always take things on face value. And now what Birkbeck's done is it's made me research and research even more and research even more. I just, I don't take everything and I always look for the counter arguments to everything. So <laughs> it really made me overanalyze that time from a lot of stuff, but it's interesting. It's just, I feel like my brain is just, uh, my mind has just expanded so much um, mm -hmm. over time to make me kind of look at things a bit differently and have a different view on the world. And, you know, my kind of, I look back, at myself beforehand, I would say maybe I was a little bit small-minded, and now it's just kind of like, you know what, I can really think about things a bit differently. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so glad that Birkbeck was um, kind of there for you guys, you know, at the right time, and, you know, you guys were able to kind of come back and study it, you know, yeah, exactly the way you wanted to do it. Um, what's something that's coming up that you're particularly excited about, be it work or kind of anything else? Okay, um, so for the last, is it two two years now? Yeah. We've we've launched a a photo exhibition, kind of showcasing some of the work that we've done at um, Mentivity. So the first year was just it was like individual portraits of some of the young people that came through our our proverbial doors, and what we've we, we've done with them, what they've achieved, and so it, it goes on display in King's Cross Cold Drops Yard. Oh wow! Right near the uh, near the station. So there's usually light boxes on Cordrop Yard, the lower stable street. Um, and so we've done it the first year. Just last year, we've done our second one, which was about 
community. So what we believe community looks like. So it was, it was more of sort of group pictures and, you know, individuals as well, but just, you know, those sorts of things of, and, and how we view community. And so we just launched another one, um, which was meant to be, it's, it is physical, it is out there in Cold, Cold Rooks Yard, um, but we've, it's just been launched online. It's about to be launched online. So um, I'll share the link with you. Definitely, um, yeah. And it, again, it's something so different. Um, it took me out of my comfort zone because I was a part of the sort of the production in, in a sense. But to, to be able to showcase what people are doing um, and, you know, just really shine the spotlight on young people, but also, you know, other people in the community that are doing some amazing things, it's like a huge blessing. It's, it's, it's massive for us because too often we, we do things in isolation. You know, you're trying to work hard to, to help other people and it's, it's, it is in isolation, but you look around and actually there's other people doing similar things yeah. or same things. And so to be, able, to be able to bring that all together has been massive for us. So that's about to launch in the next week or so. And so, yeah, really, really excited about that. Oh, yeah, you definitely have to share the link. We can put it with the podcast as well. So oh, we'll see it. Yeah. Um, I, I probably have to be in agreement with Tyson. I think I'm definitely looking forward um, to that, um, the exhibition. And I think we've got another Raising Aspiration. So I think yeah. there might be two Raising Aspiration projects that we've got coming up. Um, actually so um that again is going to be a massive thing for us um launching yeah. that again one with goldman sachs and another with another organization so that's um that's something that we really i thoroughly enjoy doing those um, meeting the young people engaging them and um again watching the growth of them again um they turn out in a few years to come amazing it sounds like you're doing such incredible work guys um we're Thank really you. proud to have you as part of the alumni community <laughs> say the least um it's been so nice talking to you both do you if people are interested if they want to find out more about the organization where should they go um www.mentivity.com um at mentivity um on the socials instagram at mentivity will give you um, awesome. information probably most of the information that we have so visit the website which again is www.mentivity.com or at, in, at mentivity on Instagram. Um, and there's lots of information. You can try and get involved with some of the work. You can donate, you can give back. And it's a great almost kind of networking platform with like-minded people as well who do similar work. So, yeah. Great. Thank you so much for your time. We hope that we see you back for a master's or a PhD <laughs> maybe one day in the future if you can put yourselves through it. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's kind of getting the support from everyone around you, probably more than just your own decision. Yeah, sure. um, but yeah, thank you so, so much. Um, and we'll be in touch soon. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.